Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. So I got that lovely notification in my email telling me that my ink flight box was on the way. And here it is, lickety split, it has arrived. I'm so excited. I am more excited about this ink flight box than I can remember being about anything in a very long time. So I can't wait to open it, so let's not wait any longer. Let's just open this puppy right up. Oh, I did want to show you. On the shipping label, it says, Shippo. Isn't that so cute? It makes me think about the uh, Hippo Noto logo. It doesn't want to focus, though. Mm. Oh, well. Anyway, it's very cute. Okay. So let's see what we have inside here. And uh, you guys know the drill. If you don't want to know what's in the ink flight box, look away. Look away. Alrighty. Ooh, I don't know what to do first. Oh my goodness. Um, now what did I say last time? I was going to swatch the inks first and give the cards a chance to dry. And then I was going to talk about the extra stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about the ink first. So I'm not going to look and see what the extras are. I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Don't look, don't look, don't tell me. I don't want to know. We all have to be surprised at the end. <laughs> okay, putting the box away. Okay, so this month's inks are from <gasps> Pannonia. Oh my goodness, I just saw Chris Sides talking about the Pannonia inks on her channel. And look, here they are. So exciting. So they were launched in 2018, and, oh wait a minute, no I'm sorry, the Pannonia Web Store was created in 2018, and then in 2020, they created the Handmade Fountain Pen Inks. Oh, pardon me one second. Sorry, I left something on the stove. I just forget myself when the ink flight arrives. Okay, so the ink line was started in 2020 by Mate Bikfalva in Hungary. And the inks are inspired by his personal life, Hungarian language, tradition, and popular culture. Alrighty, well, let's rip into these puppies and see what we got. I just love this sticky, sticky bubble wrap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just fascinating. Okay. So here are the little inks. And gosh, it seems like there's more than seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, there's seven. It just seems like a lot. Okay. So, I will start at the top of our list here and swatch as I go. Okay, so Pannonia Dungo. This bright golden orange is inspired by wasps. Well, that has to be this one. My goodness. Pannonia Dungo. Wasps. Yikes. You know, it's funny, I was just watching the movie, The Nice Guys, which is a very funny movie with Ryan Gosling and, um, oh, shoot, who was the guy that was in Gladiator? Russell Crowe. And they're two kind of bumbling private investigators in the 1970s Los Angeles. It is a hilarious movie if you've never seen it, but of course back in the 70s everybody was talking about the killer bees coming up from South America, so they of course were talking about the killer bees in the movie, and there were a few bees that were featured throughout the film, so it's just interesting that here is this ink about wasps. Alrighty, it's fate. Okay, so... And Pannonia has two ends. Pannonia. And this is Dungo. Hmm. Dungo with an accent. Fun. Wow, this looks like a high shader. 
Alrighty. And of course, Dungo makes me think of Dingo, which makes me think of Australia, which makes me think of Robert Oster. <laughs> oh, word association is so much fun. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm not using a um, sample keeper. What am I thinking? I'm taking my life in my hands. Wow, that is super bright. That is like highlighter bright. Woo, and look at that ink run. Oh, I guess you can't see the ink run. Wow, can you see that droplet? Oh no, you can't see. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm overwrought by the ink. But can you see that droplet of ink that has formed where it ran down? My goodness, that is crazy. This stuff is just running all over the place. Which is really fun and interesting. Okay, wow. Okay, I'm going to stop being mesmerized by the ink at any moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's move on. I'm going to set this guy aside to dry. And then next up on our list, we have Pannonia Zoldike. Zoldik? Zoldike? I'm not sure. It has an umlaut over the O, which makes it make the the U uh sound. Zol, Zoldike. Named after Hungary's green finch, this olive green with cool undertones shades well. Ooh, who do we think is an olive green? Let's try this one. Nope, not that one. Olive green. Ah, oh, here it is. So, a green finch. I guess, is that like a goldfinch? I never knew there were different colors of finches. A green finch and a goldfinch. Oh, well, goodness, I have to put the lid back on this one. Okay, whew. Too much ink excitement. I just don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. I need a swatch card. And where did he go? There he is. Zuldijk. Zuldijk. Alrighty. So this ink seems to be, I mean this brand of ink seems to be very flowy. Alrighty. Pannonia. And, um, I don't think it mentions where the name Pannonia comes from, but I wonder if that's some kind of play on the word pen and country. It's the country of pens. It's Pannonia. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not familiar with this brand, so it's very exciting to have a completely new ink arrive. Don't forget our little umlaut. I think that's an umlaut. If, if not, please let me know what the correct word is for that. Ooh. And my, my poor little paper towels are getting quite inky. But never fear, there's always a new paper towel. Okay. So now we are swatching. This looks like a really pretty color. Hmm. Uh-oh. I think that Q-tip got something on it. Let's try another one. And it seems like olive greens have been really popular in recent years. So this is a very appropriate time for a brand to come out with a new ink. Wow, that is so crazy. It is just breaking across the paper. It kind of reminds me of the way that uh, Manio inks behave, where they they seem really watery and they have weird amounts of surface tension. It's not running quite as much as the first one, but still pretty wet. All right. Ooh, you know what? I should be doing dots on these guys. Or, you know, reinforcers. 
So before I get my Q-tips mixed up, I will um, swipe them. While there's still some ink on the Q-tips. Oh, see, I think he got a little bit of Zoldyke on him. But that's okay. We know it's it's fluorescent orange or fluorescent yellow, whichever, <laughs> whichever you choose. All right, let's get this guy. And, oh no, ooh. I know it's hard to get the reinforcers perfectly aligned, but that was completely off. Okay, much better. And this is that lovely olive green. Ooh. Hmm. Very pretty. Okay, so those guys are done. And, um, okay, so who's next? Pannonia Goodenzoid. Good, Goodenzoid. Goodenzoid. Hmm. Goodenzoid. Okay, in case you haven't guessed by now, I'm fascinated by words, and I don't know any Hungarian words at all, so these are really fun, and I've never seen a word with two umlauts in it. I still hope I'm saying the right word for that, but the dots over the O's, good denizold, good denizold. I think that's close. Okay, let's move on. Because we're here to talk about the inks. We're not here to have a um, linguistics lesson. Okay, Mate wanted a green that matched his Pelican M1000. Nailed it. All right, a green to match his Pelican M1000. Oh, this must be it. Yep, it is. Good dinner's old. Oh, well, I guess I should hold this up where you guys can see it. Good Den is old. Really fun. Oops. Oh. <laughs> well, the sample holder just knocks out all the samples. That's okay. Thankfully, all the lids were on, so we're good. Mm, I'm just butterfingers. Alrighty. But I don't have a Pelican M1000. I'm not sure if I want one. Sometimes people seem to suggest it's the best pelican, and other times people suggest that it's too big of a pelican. I guess it all depends on your preference. But um, I would have to say I probably favor larger pens. Little pens. I mean, I, I just, I have a death grip on everything. Even this poor little dip dip pen right now I've got a death grip on it so the bigger the pen the less uh, stress it seems to put on my hand so a great big pen I would probably you know hold that very comfortably okay so good Danny Zold Alrighty. This does seem like a lovely dark green. Alright. And so far it looks like we're getting two greens in this bunch. Because we've got the olive green and now this darker green. And I don't think that's very typical. I think, um, of course I'm very new to the ink flights, but just looking at um, other people's videos of their ink flights... It doesn't seem like you get two greens that often. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Such a lovely dark green. Okay, so for those of you who have green pelicans, would you say this is a good match for your pelican? And I have to say a green pelican. One of those traditional green striped pelicans. They are definitely on my wish list. My my someday pen, someday I'll have one. But that is very lovely. Alright, and we will let him dry. 
I'll be very interested to see how these inks dry because they're they're so um they're so wet. Ooh, and I forgot his little reinforcer. Hmm. And I also dropped his Q-tip down with the other ones, so who knows which dark nib is this green, but that's okay. We'll just get a little bit more. Okay. Ooh, it's so pretty. I really like it. Alrighty. So much fun. Even dabbing the ink on is fun. Okay, so who do we have next? Pannonia Mares. Marigzold? Marigzold. Hmm. Alright, don't worry. This poison green isn't actually toxic. Mate named it after his mom's favorite color. Oh, he named it for his mom. And that means we've got a third green. So that is so interesting. And here it is. Okay, I'm not going to forget the reinforcer this time. Wow. I would not. I know you guys can't see that very well. But I would not call that green. I would definitely call that blue. Marigzold. But these are certainly flowy. Very nice. Alright, Pannonia. And that is Merig Zold. Hmm. Definitely looking blue, leaning towards the teal, I would say. But again, there's that age old argument is teal green or teal blue? Or can you have a teal green and a teal blue? And I guess it depends on the shade. Sometimes there are teal greens and sometimes there are teal blues. But if this is the ink maker's mother's favorite color, then she has excellent taste because this is beautiful. Wow. Yeah, I would probably call this teal blue. It's like a it's like a dark turquoise, which I guess is what teal is. Anyway, right? He doesn't seem quite as flowy. Now it's just possible that I didn't get enough ink on my Q-tip. But man, none of them have have flowed as crazily as that first one did. So very interesting. Okay. So we are going to let this one dry. And, um, get his cap. So pretty. Alright. And next up, we have Pannonia Sansveri Keck. This medium-toned blue is named after famous Hungarian painter Tivadar Kotska Santveri. Or Santveri. I'm sure I'm butchering all these poor these poor people's names. Okay. Santveri Kek. So where is that one? Ah, oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get this guy to focus. Santveri Kek. Let me get his reinforcer. I am just all butterfingers. I don't know what it is. It's too much excitement. That's what it is. This is so exciting and so much fun. All right, make sure I get a good dip on there. Let's see. Pannonia. Font. Ooh, I 
Gotta squeeze it in. Sand Fari Kick. Uh-oh, did I forget somebody? I did, I forgot one of the accents. Oh, we can't miss an accent. Let's see, just get a little teeny bit on the pen to get that on there. There we go. I feel better now. And these. <laughs> oh, you know what? I need to get Marilyn's little sample holder out here because these guys are just not sitting up. Ooh, they're all excited too. They're excited to be out of the box and getting tried. Okay, there we go. Now I can't knock them over. Let's see. Of course, you know I'm crazy about blue, so I'm looking forward to this one. Ooh, and that is very pretty. And again, it seems to have that kind of watery, um, that watery quality that some of the Manyo inks seem to have. And it's, it's kind of breaking across the paper. It's very interesting. And this one definitely does not want to run. He is sticking to the Q-tip. Very interesting. Ooh. And I wonder if there might be some hints of other colors in there. You know, ever since I've gotten into these multi-shading inks, I just think every ink is a multi-shading ink. So, don't listen to me. I'm, I'm seeing the multi-shaders everywhere. Oh, hmm. That looks very interesting. Looks like there's some interesting things going on in there. Cool. Ooh, and now I've gotten the <laughs> the ink all over my fingers. Oh, ink mixing is just fascinating. And all these new ink makers are coming out, making up these new inks, and I just wonder how they do it. It's like magic. It's like alchemy. How do they put all these components together to make these beautiful liquids? Okay. So it is time for the penultimate sample. Penultimate being the next to last, which makes me sad to say. This is Pannonia Kekfesto. This deep blue with hinting of sheen takes its name from the color and embroidery style of traditional Hungarian clothing. Oh, cool! Kekfesto. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Kekfesto. Cool, and that has two accents on the O. I wonder what that means. Very interesting. Oh, it is Reinforcer. I've seen different um, traditional clothing from some of the Eastern European countries, and it's beautiful. All of that embroidery is just beautiful. And the traditional dances. I don't remember if it was a Hungarian dance or not. But um, I used to watch that show, So You Think You Can Dance. And they had one of the teams do a traditional folk dance one time. You know, trying out different things. Because there's all different kinds of dances in the world, right? And it did not go over well. Which made me sad. I mean... It's still a fun and interesting thing to learn about, but, you know, people just want the cool dances, the modern dances, but there's all kinds of dances in the world, but I digress. Okay, so this is Pannonia, and I'm sure the people who dance those traditional dances take great pride in them. Keck Festo. And there's one accent on the E, and there's two accents on the O. That is so cool. It's like eyelashes. And this does seem like a lovely dark blue. And Kekfesto is reminding me of Kiku, which is the dark blue Manyo ink, which I also love. 
So I'm thinking I will enjoy this one very much. Let's see. Ooh, wow. That is beautiful. Ooh, it's kind of squeaking against the paper. Let's see. Get a little bit more ink. Because the drip is the icing on the cake. It's just fun to watch the ink run around. And that's where you get a lot of interesting shading and sheen and all kinds of fun stuff. Although there's kind of a weird break in the paper right there. I don't know. I, I make my own swatch cards and I've been having some trouble with this latest batch. I don't know what's going on with these guys. But anyway, we will set him aside to dry. And let me get his top here. So pretty. Oop. And I'm very sad to say it, but we have already come to our final ink sample. The ink sample stands alone. And this final one is Pannonia uh, who? Gischin, Gischinabarna. Yes, Jenna This chestnut color recalls nostalgic childhood memories. Ooh. Chestnut, like chestnuts roasting on an open fire? Let's see. Yes, Jenna Hmm, I wonder if I'm close. I just saw a little headline on the internet the other day and it said why don't we roast chestnuts anymore I didn't click on the link to see what the answer was but I love chestnuts have you ever had a chestnut they are delicious and um I've never roasted them on an open fire before but I have roasted them in my oven and occasionally they explode <laughs> so roasting chestnuts is always an adventure and they are delicious. All right. Pannonia. And this is... Hmm. I'm not sure how they pronounce consonants when they group them together like that. Gestinia Barna. Is Jinya Barna. Hmm. I'm not sure. It's a fascinating looking word. And I wonder what it means. Oh, and there's a link at the bottom. Oh, that's so funny. It says. Oh, come on, Mr. Paper. We got to focus here. Visit pannonia.eu slash blog to hear the proper pronunciations of each ink name. So now we'll have to go to the blog and see if I got close to any of these pronunciations. <laughs> but it's fun to try. Gosh, when you, when you know your own language, when you're a native speaker of a language, you don't even think about the pronunciation. You just know how to say the words. And it doesn't even occur to you that other people might struggle with the word. I grew up in a place called Gloucester, which is based on the English word Gloucester, which is a place in England. But it has a very strange spelling, and some people think it's pronounced Gloucester. So I've spent most of my life hearing people say Gloucester. Even the, the um, news people on television say Gloucester. But come on, people. If you're going to report the news, you got to know how to pronounce stuff properly. Am I right? Oh, I did it again. I dropped the Q-tip in the bunch without doing my, um, my reinforcer. 
Hmm. Greens and browns. Greens and browns are quite popular these days. So these are some excellent inks for uh, Mr. Big Falvey to be working on. Hmm. All right. So that is the last of our seven inks. So these are all going to be drying on the side. And now we're going to look at our goodies. So we're going to turn the paper over. Claire Fontaine Ada, A6 soft cover notebook with assorted colors. Well, let's see. Ooh. Ooh, it feels nice. Ooh, it's it's embossed. All of these uh, designs are cut into the cover. Can you guys see that? It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but um, alas, my camera gave up on me, so I'm not sure at which point we got cut off. But this is the Midori Paintable Stamp, and it is a self inking square stamp. Oh, I'm not sure. It's an oil-based ink, and it's waterproof, so you can write and paint over it. Hmm, this stamp is sized perfectly to use with the Midori sticky notes that arrived in December's Ink Flight. Don't you feel a magnetism toward fountain pens? Attach the heart-shaped inky tine magnet to remind yourself of your true love. Oh, I'm sorry, I had already moved on to the next thing. I'm not done talking about this thing yet. So let's see. Let's crack this sucker open. Because I love me some stamps. Okay. Ooh, oh, something just fell out. What is this? Oh dear. At the beginning of each use, no, I'm sorry. At the beginning of use, the ink tends to come out too much when pressed on paper as the ink is full, which may cause bleed through. Pressing the stamp strongly or for a long time may also result in bleed through of the ink. Please be sure to try a test press before use. Well, let me find a piece of scrap paper here so we can do some testing. So, hmm. Ooh. Oh, oh, the stamp is this. It's what the picture is. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. That is so adorable. And it says a thousand impressions. And I'm sure once you've used up the ink, you can always get some more ink and re-ink it. It's an oil-based ink. I wonder if Midori makes refills for it. Oh, and there's more instructions inside. Let's see. The ink is good for about a thousand presses. Hmm. Well, it doesn't say anything about re-inking it. Hmm. It does say when the ink stamps, when the ink stamps on thin, refill with the special ink for the stamp, sold separately. Well, there we go. So we can just keep using our little inky stamp indefinitely. Well, that is just cute as a bug's ear. I love it. Okay. So I accidentally skipped ahead. Where's our paper here? Um, yes. So we are showing our magnetism towards fountain pens with our tine heart. Be my inky tine. Oh, I get it now. Valentine inky tine. I got it. Okay. And then February's theme is self-care. Gosh, several other people have mentioned online that February for them was about self-care. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. And that was said by Oscar Wilde. Cool. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you, Eek Journal. This was lots of fun. But before we go, we have to check on our cards and see how this wonderful Pannonia ink has dried. So let's see. Oh, where's my paper? I'll go in the order of the paper again. So we had Dungo, which is that whew, super bright yellow, but it looks like it would shade nicely to orange. And you can see on the writing as well, there's a lot of shading, 
Well, maybe you can't see it very well. <laughs> but there's there's a lot of yellow to orange shading in this ink. Very pretty. Dare I say that this might be a, a competitor of Apache Sunset? Oh, no. Okay, and then who is next? Zuldyke. The olive green. Yes. Hmm, and that's very pretty too. And I see some shading in there. It's a little more subtle than the yellow ink. Now, I don't have, I've never tried, um, what is it, Roaring Klingner um, Alt Gold Grun. I wonder if this would compare with that. But I've never tried that one, so I'm not sure. But it's definitely a lovely olive green. Let me see. Next is the Gudenzold, which is supposed to match a Pelican M1000. And ooh, very nice. It's that lovely dark green with some red sheen. Can we see the sheen? Sort of, a little bit. Ugh, lighting ever an issue. But yes, this does have some beautiful red sheen. You gotta turn it just right. But yeah, hopefully you can get the idea. There's some red sheen on there. But I am happy to tell you that the sun is still shining past 5 o'clock these days. So that is fabulous news. So pretty soon I will be able to have natural light for my videos. It's wonderful. All right, next up is Maregzold, the poison green. Gosh, that is just not what I would think of as a poison green. I mean, poison green to me is like like a lime green. Oh, actually like my water. <laughs> this is the leftover from all of my, my nib rinsing. Now I would say that's kind of closer to a poison green, but I would even say that poison green is even more intense. But um, I would say that this is a, a lovely turquoise teal. And again, with some beautiful sheen reddish sheen or perhaps some pinkish sheen gosh it's so hard to get this to show up on the camera oh oh I think we got it a little bit just a little bit but that is a mighty pretty ink all right and then next up we have the Sant Vary Keck hmm that is a nice soft blue. It looks like it does have some nice shading. Hmm. Very pretty. I don't see any sheen on it, but it does look like it would be a nice shader. And this is the one where I thought I saw some, some multi-tones in there, but again, I think it's just wishful thinking on the part of my eyes. And then who was next? Kekfesto. Which again kind of reminds me of Sailor Manyo Kikyu. It's that dark blue with the red sheen. Very pretty. Oh, yeah, you can see the sheen on this one. Oh, and didn't the drip come out to look kind of heart shaped? Isn't that funny? In honor of Valentine's Day. Huh. The, the ink with the red heart of sheen. The red sheening heart. Cool. And very pretty. And then finally, we have the Geschinabarna. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. We have to check out the blog to see how to pronounce them. And I don't see any sheen on this one, but again, I think this might be a nice shader, and it's just a lovely shade of brown. I know there's some discussion about, you know, is it a warm brown? Is it a cool brown? Does it lean towards the red? And I don't know. I think I like my browns a bit more on the warm side, and I really like this one. So I'm, I'm thinking this one leans kind of towards the, the warm side of the spectrum. But it's very nice. Alrighty. Well, here are our goodies. Our lovely notebook with the Moroccan motif and our um, 
magnet. Magnets are fun. And then our stamp. Such a cute stamp. All right. Well, thank you. Oops, I just whacked the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> But thank you again, Ink Journal. This was lots of fun to unbox, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you again soon for some more inky, inky fun. So take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.